Welcome to buffers. The term buffer generally refers to something that lessens or absorbs the impact of something else. In chemistry though, and in biology, buffers have a more specific meaning. They refer to a substance that prevents or resists a change in pH. Why is that necessary though? Why would we want a substance that prevents or resists a change in pH? Well, let's look at the example of human blood. In humans, the pH of our blood has to stay at around 7.4. It's typically maintained at this level, and that's for optimal functioning. And the pH can change a little bit, but it really needs to stay in a narrow range around 7.4. In fact, if we go above 7.8 for blood pH, or below 6.8, for even a few minutes, it can result in death. Well, you may be wondering, Mr. Isaacs, what's the big deal? I totally stopped injecting myself with hydrochloric acid like last week, so why would my blood pH change? And that's a good question. Why would your blood pH change if you're not introducing acids or bases into your blood? Well, what you may not realize is that every single one of your cells uses oxygen and then gives off carbon dioxide. And this carbon dioxide enters the blood and your blood contains water and the water that's present in your blood can react with the carbon dioxide in very small amounts to produce H2CO3 carbonic acid and as its name implies carbonic acid is an acid so this reaction has been happening your entire life because your cells have always been producing carbon dioxide as they use oxygen and if small amounts of acid are constantly being produced in your blood, how is it that your pH is able to stay at 7.4? And the answer to that, the answer to how your blood is able to stay within a certain range of 7.4, is that your blood contains something called a buffer. And a buffer is essentially a solution, so something dissolved in water. And it could be a solution composed of one of two things. Either the solution is made up of a weak acid and also along with that weak acid, its conjugate base. Or the solution could also be made up of a weak base and the conjugate acid of that weak base. So let's see what this looks like. We'll use a weak acid. So we'll start with acetic acid, a weak acid. And the formula for acetic acid is HCH2COO. That's one way you can see acetic acid written. And acetic acid can ionize into H plus and the acetate ion. So the acetic acid is our weak acid and we know that means because it's an acid that it's a proton donor and we see the proton being donated right here. So the conjugate base is what's left over after the proton's been donated and that's this acetate ion here. So this is the conjugate base. So then how do we make a buffer knowing what the acid and base are? Well we're going to take equal amounts of the weak acid so some equal concentration of this and we're going to combine it with the same concentration of some salt that contains a conjugate base so I could use sodium acetate because this salt will dissociate in water and give me this acetate ion the conjugate base so I make the buffer by using equal amounts of the weak acid and a salt containing the conjugate base so now the big question is how does this buffer work well, if I take some container, fill it with water, and I add acetic acid and my acetate ion containing salt, I now have a buffered solution in this container. Now, this buffer is going to resist a change in pH. That means it's going to resist an increase in pH and resist a decrease in pH. So let's look at those two cases separately. So let's start by looking at what happens when I add a strong acid. I'm going to choose hydrochloric acid as my strong acid. And I know that hydrochloric acid fully dissociates into H plus and Cl minus. It completely dissociates because it's a strong acid, and that's the definition. So by adding hydrochloric acid, what I'm really saying is that I'm adding hydrogen ions, or protons. Most of these H pluses, most of the H plus ions, will react with the acetate ion that's present and form the acetic acid 
So if most of the H plus is used in this reaction to create more acetic acid molecules, which by the way, acetic acid is one of the components to the buffer, if most of the H plus is used up in this reaction, then there won't be H plus freely floating around, meaning adding a strong acid did not result in an increase of hydrogen ions. So I won't really see the pH change by that much. There'll still be a small change, but not nearly as much as we would see if these H plus ions from the strong acid were all just floating around. We can also look at what happens when we add a strong base. So for our strong base, let's consider sodium hydroxide, a very common strong base that we've been using. Sodium hydroxide we know dissociates completely into Na plus and OH minus ions. And we know that these OH minus ions, these hydroxide ions, would increase the pH of the solution. The greater concentration of OH minus ions would drive the pH up. However, just like we saw with the acid, most of the OH minus ions produced here would instead undergo a neutralization reaction with the acetic acid present in the buffer to produce water and the acetate ion, which is the conjugate base again. And because most of this OH is used up in this neutralization reaction, we don't see the pH increase as much as it would otherwise. So this is just one example of a buffer system. We have acetic acid and its conjugate base, the acetate ion. In your blood, the buffer that's used there is carbonic acid, H2CO3, and its conjugate base, HCO3, the bicarbonate ion. So this generally describes how to create a buffer and how a buffer works to prevent changes in pH. There are also two more things that are helpful to know when you're dealing with buffers. And the first is that to create a buffer, it's important to know how to quickly recognize a weak acid and its conjugate base. So if you have some weak acid of the general formula HA, you should be able to remember that it dissociates into the free H plus ion, the free proton, and this A minus ion. So finding the weak acid and conjugate base pair is always going to be this HA, something with a hydrogen, and then something that has lost the hydrogen, the conjugate base. So anytime you're given a weak acid, you can very quickly find this conjugate base by remembering it's just whatever the A is in the acid with a negative charge because it's lost a proton. So we saw that with acetic acid, that just became the acetate ion. And we also saw it with a blood buffer, which is carbonic acid that has lost one proton, and we get its conjugate base. So this general formula HA and A minus is a very useful thing to remember. The second thing that's important about buffers is that they have a limit, they have a capacity. It's called buffer capacity. And the buffer capacity basically refers to how much acid or base the buffer can absorb and still resist the change in pH. Because eventually, if one of these things is used up, if the, acid, if the weak acid is all used up neutralizing a base, or the conjugate base is all used up neutralizing a strong acid, then it won't be able to prevent that change in pH anymore. So the buffer capacity is how much the buffer can absorb and still resist the change in pH. And we can look at two examples of this. If I make a buffer with 0.1 molar acetic acid and 0.1 molar acetate ion, this is going to have a much, much greater buffer capacity than if I did 0.001 molar acetic acid and 0.001 molar acetate ion. And the reason that this higher concentration buffer has a greater buffer capacity is because there are simply more particles available to absorb acid or base. There's another neat thing about buffer capacity, and so we're going to explore this solution a little bit more. When we make the buffer of acetic acid and its conjugate base, it basically fixes the pH at about 4.8. So now if we look at this buffer capacity thing again, the first solution that has a 0.1 molar concentration of each component, the higher concentrated buffer, has this pH 4.8 it's sort of fixing the solution at. Just because it's more concentrated, that doesn't have any effect on the pH that the buffer works at. This very low concentrated buffer also fixes the pH at 4.8. So buffers work independently of the concentration. The only thing the concentration of the buffer affects is how much acid or how much base 
it can absorb. That wraps up our lesson on buffers. Write down any questions you have in your notes and bring them with you to class.